This is the north face of the Eiger. It's the most iconic and fearsome mountain in the Alps. The first successful summit back in 1938 took four days. Swiss speed climber Uli Steck has scaled it in under three hours. Uli started climbing when he was 12. Before that, he'd been an accomplished ice hockey player following in the footsteps of his older brothers. So how did his love of climbing come about? It was a friend of my father who took me out climbing, like on a small rock, it was like, I don't know, 20 meters. And this guy was really like old school, you know, like no harness, just we have just a rope around the waist and and also like I had to climb on lead my first route in my life and there was like just two pitons on this route and he just yeah if you want to climb you go up there and of course I was scared like hell to be to climb this and then we came down and I was really satisfied like oh I've done this but to be honest, I was really scared. Why you are so scared about that? You know, it's there's no point. There's a rope, and you're totally safe. And this made for me climbing very interesting. It's not just only like physic. It's also a lot in in your mind. The climbing fraternity started noticing Uli when he was 17. Before he was 19, he'd climbed the Mont Blanc Massif. But more importantly, he'd also made a successful attempt on the north face of the Eiger. That's the Eiger up there. I mean, the Eiger is not the tallest mountain in, in Switzerland, but the Eiger has m the most iconic history, I think. It was the last face, the last big problem not climbed in the Alps, and it was in the 1938 when they climbed first the the Eiger North face and they just actually climbed the last big face in the Alps. The Alps are known as the playground of Europe, but the Eiger is their most dangerous game. Since 1935, over 60 people have died on its north face and several books and films have been released relating its fatal attraction. The Swiss authorities even slapped a ban on climbing the so-called murder wall because so many climbers were perishing while attempting the North Face. The tragedy surrounding the failed 1936 attempt of four alpinists, including Tony Kurz and Andreas Hinterstoiser, inspired so many young men to become mountaineers themselves. For me as a mountaineer, you know, it's like you start climbing and you know all this history of, of climbing, you read the books and, and especially like the, the white spider from the first ascent from Heinrich Harr. And you knew like, if you want to be a real alpinist, you, you have to climb the Eiger North face. And, and I have done it like first time I was 18. And for me, that was the point I thought, now I'm a real alpinist. And after, after years, I was climbing again and again. And until now, I climbed it like, I think 36 times this face. So I know it quite well. The world of alpinism had been turned on its head in 1969, when Italian Reinhold Messner and Austrian Peter Habeler reached the summit of the North Face in 10 hours, a time many thought impossible. After that, climbers were tripping over themselves to set a new mark, but no one had been able to go under four hours. It was 2007 when Uli first broke the speed record, shattering the existing time and reaching the summit in three hours and 54 minutes.
only dedicated the following 12 months to getting himself into even better shape, aided by a team of experts and a strict training regime. His goal? Another attempt on the notorious 2,000-meter vertical north wall. Incredibly, he free-climbed it solo in just 2 hours, 47 minutes and 33 seconds. I'm a climber and I really like pushing my, my own limits. The climbing world had a new superstar. What Uli had done was the mountaineering equivalent of shattering the four-minute mile. I just try to do things that's never been done before, like, you know, just climbing the Eiger under three hours. It's never done before. Nobody could even imagine that's possible before I have done it. No. People know, oh, it's possible, and it, it will keep going, you know, there will be people faster, and there will be people even much more faster than this, but it's just like breaking a new benchmark, you know, like, go under it, and, and I will keep going on that track, I will not go back on the Eiger and do it faster, for me, that's not the breakthrough anymore, it's like, okay, now we know it, now we have to figure out how how to get further on. Uli's home is just 20 kilometers from the Eiger in the town of Interlaken in the Bernese Oberland. Located between Lakes Thun and Brienz, it's one of Switzerland's main tourist destinations and is a perfect base for those who wish to explore the region and its mountains. The town is full of all things Swiss. There's also a spectacular view of the Jungfrau, one of the most symbolic sites in Switzerland. I'm so used to the mountains and just loving them, you know. It, it doesn't have to be the, like, like the high mountains, but, but here, you know, it's, it's so beautiful. But I like to be in this environment, having like, I don't like like flat landscape. Need a coffee now. <laughs> Although the 37-year-old is one of Switzerland's most famous faces, Uli shuns the limelight. It's very important you, you protect yourself. When you start your career, you think, wow, it's cool, you know, you see an article in, your, in the newspaper or you, you see you in the, in the television and then on one point you realize it's like, oh, that's actually not, you know, being in the media, that's not like your really personality. It's like, yeah, it's a film or it's, or somebody writing about you. It's not your, yourself. I always separate the two two things, like there is the professional Uli Steck, that's the climber, that's my professional life. But I have also private life, that's with my wife, with my family, and we separate that. Before he became a professional climber, Uli was a carpenter. He'd ply his trade in the summer, then spent the winter months as a ski lift assistant. What wages he earned he would use to buy equipment for climbing. Uli was always pushing his mountain climbing career. At the age of 28, and by now a professional, he climbed the north faces of the Eiger, Mönch and Jungfrau in just 25 hours. I'm a really curious person and I like to, to move on. It's like, I don't want to standing on the same point all the time. I just try to go further and further in my whole life and I think that's that what drives me to pushing my limits. Then in 2007 and 2008 came the two records on the north face of the Eiger that put Uli Steck at the forefront of speed climbing. Uli's achievements have been filmed by his friend Robert Bursch, a world-renowned photographer and expert climber. It was Robert's shot of Uli, ropeless on the Excalibur pillar on Mount Wendernstöck in Switzerland, that catapulted Uli to international stardom. So Robert's very well placed to say what it's like to climb with the so-called Swiss machine. Sometimes it's a little bit frustrating because uh, he's such a good climber. 
for me it's very impressive how how he's climbing in this uh, in these conditions with rocks and ice and snow. You can really feel his uh, how safe he feels and uh, how safe he's working there. I don't have to do uh, difficult things because if it's difficult, we have the rope and we were uh, we protect us. But uh, but mostly you climb, you make not very difficult things. But uh, you are always in, on a place where it's dangerous if you make a mistake. So you have to be always very concentrated that you don't forget the security because you're looking for what is the best uh, moment for a picture or for a film sequence. So the danger is big that you make a mistake because you are not concentrated on climbing. With Uli's style of climbing, preparation is of the essence. Everything that goes on his back or in his pack needs to weigh as little as possible so as not to slow him down on his ascents. The biggest problem is the weight. As less weight you have, as faster you are, as more energy you save. Uh, that's, a, that's a key point. So we try or I try to, to minimize the weight of the equipment as, as much as possible. It means I just take all the necessary things, I just leave everything at home, I, I think I don't know need and that sometimes it's really hard you know you, you decide like two power bars or just one power bar is it one enough it's like it's just 50 grams but 50 grams here 50 grams there on the end it's one kilo and one kilo is a lot one of Uli's recent targets was the 8,000 meter Shisha Pangma mountain in the Himalayas to underline his ability he soloed the southwest face in ten and a half hours Joe Flannery works for Mountain Hardware, who provide clothing and equipment for Uli. He mentioned to me once that he does not enjoy suffering. You know, he, he and suffering in the mountaineering and climbing world is spending weeks at a time at base camp on the mountain, enduring uh, the, the cold and the wind. He wants to get up and get it done. And, uh, you know, I think he has a very different experience. And he's, he's changing the sport. There's no question about it. Because he cannot go on a face in the Himalaya and climb it 20 times and then breaking a record. It's like, you have to go there and you want to climb something that's never been climbed before. Just go and be able to climb fast as possible. And actually, with the ascent of Shisha Pangma, it was like the perfect climb. And it was like coming into the the base camp, I got two days of good weather, which is actually for 8,000 meter peak, mostly you're not going to summit. But with these skills, I was like, wow, two days, that's enough time. So came to base camp, next morning we start to go to, to ABC, set up on ABC, the same evening, the same night, I leaving for the phase, 10, hour, 10 and a half hours later, I'm on summit. And that's what, what I really like. After conquering the hardest peaks in Europe, Uli Steck has moved on to the rarefied air of the Himalayas and proved that his style of climbing works in both environments. He has a list of speed records that's second to none and is revered by his peers as someone who pushes the boundaries of one of the toughest and most dangerous sports in the world. <laughs>